Hey guys, I'm here over the weekend. I went and saw Killers of the Flower Moon. This is Martin Scorsese's latest film. It's written by both him and Eric Roth. It's based on a book by the same name by David Grand that chronicles the, the heinous events that took place during the 1920s in Oklahoma regarding the Osage Native American tribes when they came upon a vast wealth of oil on their lands, which along with great wealth, power, and prosperity, brought a lot of unwanted attention from all over, not just within Oklahoma, but people coming out in a black gold rush of sorts to prey upon this land and also to conspire about getting the rights to that land and the money itself away from the Osage tribes. In this film, it, it chooses to center in on a central family. This is a true story. From what I've seen so far, because I looked it up after watching the film, there's not too many discrepancies that I've seen in any kind of major way. The, the film really kind of hits a lot of these points hard, and it is it is a hard watch at times, man, and not just because of the length. This is like a three and a half hour movie, and while it does, after a point, feel its length, I also can't say that there's any moments in the film that I would necessarily pull out, because I think that everything the film shows contributes to the overall experience, and it is... It's a moving and powerful experience, man. I, I found myself disgusted. I found myself, you know, you go through the whole gamut of emotions throughout this film. There are happy moments. It does celebrate the Osage, their culture, their community. Uh, there's a lot of attention given to them and the casting for it. Now, not all of the Native Americans that are cast in the film to represent them are Osage, but it's a, it's another step forward for Hollywood, man. I mean, between this and Prey, I, I'm loving seeing this, and I hope that these are steps to kind of further that and just kind of get us away from the concept that all Native Americans are kind of the same. Like, that's kind of what old Hollywood loved to do, you know? They just blanketed them in, like, one kind of concept and never really kind of got away from it because there's a lot of intricacies that we see within this that we haven't really seen on the screen before. And I, I love seeing that element of it, but that's also another thing that makes this so sad is, especially when you tie it into the real world events, cause this is also set during the same time. And it even comes up in uh, the movie itself is this happens at the same time, like in Oklahoma as well with Black Wall Street, you know, it, it's like concurrent uh, with this story and it's just horrifying. And like Martin Scorsese's other films, you know, the in-world violence and stuff like that, it's not like hammed up or whatever. Like, it's all so real that it at times feels like you're actually a witness to these heinous acts. And it does become hard to watch at times. And I, I did find myself disgusted, uh, emotionally torn up. It can be a challenging watch, but the film is just beautifully directed. Martin Scorsese does a really good job at kind of dancing around all these different kind of tones and vibes while selling this narrative wholly. Like he came into this with an idea and with a focus and an intent in this film that I feel like with the reputation he's garnered with the whole like mob culture kind of thing, that maybe there's gonna be a preconception going into this. And this is kind of not that at all. There's no glorification or anything like that or anything that I feel like can be misconstrued as glorification of any of the things that we're witnessing in this. It's really more of a condemnation and especially the way that the film closes with the epilogue that kind of recounts the actual uh, real world events that followed this, the trials that went place. This is one of the first uh, big Bureau of Investigations before it was actually the FBI Bureau of Investigation cases that they tackled. It's a really interesting thing to see how this all came about, the shortcomings of the system at the time and the way things kind of play out. It's just so, it's heartbreaking, man. It's really heartbreaking, but it's not without its heartwarming moments, don't get me wrong. At its core, our lead characters, uh, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro, and Lily Gladstone, really kind of carry the focus of the film, and their performances are phenomenal. We really do hone in on Leo throughout the majority of the film. He's, if we had a central character, it's really kind of him because he is the connecting tissue between the conspirator and the people being affected by it. But I got to say, at, at, out of this, because I hadn't seen anything she's been in, but Lily Gladstone was a highlight of this movie, man. Like there's so much depth behind her performance because there's it's it's reserved in a lot of ways but when you know things break down 
there she gets to sell it a lot but there's these subtle ways that she carries herself throughout all of these different moments where you you can always see the gears turning like that she's always pondering something throughout each and every scene and she really kind of blew me away in this movie man among these three there's plenty of other familiar faces throughout this it's a long movie so you got to kind of fill these gaps in man and there's a lot of familiar faces that I love seeing pop up with this, namely Brendan Fraser. Again, I'm so glad that he's kind of having this renaissance, you know, that kind of kicked off with Doom Patrol, which we're covering right now. He actually got to appear himself in this last episode, which happens infrequently throughout the series since he's been mostly a voice. But I love him, see, seeing him come back into this. You know, John Lithgow, Jesse Plemons, uh, you know, plenty of people to name throughout this movie, man. And I, I love what they did with this. It was such a really powerful watch. And these are, this is the type of movie that I, I really like to see that just kind of enrich you in the world. It, it does, like a lot of his films, really set you in the time. What was in at the time, what people valued at the time, what things looked like, you know, the culture, the spirit, the air. It really sets you and entrenches you in every element of the period for good and for bad. It doesn't sugarcoat it, man. It really does shed a light, or at least put a spotlight back on kind of the past. I know this book itself that it was based on has already popped up on a couple banned books list. It's just, again, man, you can't bury the horrors of the past, man. I think that's something that needs to be talked about. It needs to be put out there. I don't think burying it and ignoring it helps anybody at all. If you don't remember your past, you're doomed to repeat it, or whatever the saying is, you know? So I feel like this is one of those things where I like that he's digging this up. I'm, I'm glad that he's kind of focused in on it. Apparently, this is a, a story he's been very passionate about telling for a long time based on interviews and even a preamble that opens before the film talking about his interest in this story and wanting to get it out there. And I'm glad that he did, man, because this was a really good watch. It's a really great movie. It is, as they say, cinema. This movie is filmed doing what film needs to do and that's put a mirror up to society that's what art does man is it puts a mirror up to society to history to our culture to just kind of give us a reflection of the world around us in a way that makes us look at it in a different way or see something about it maybe we weren't seen before that's what i love about art whether it's film whether it's music whether it's painted sculpted whatever that's what art's meant to do and this film is that to me. So I, I do re highly recommend this film. If you can stomach the watch, sit through the whole thing. Uh, if you can't make it out to the theater, it's more than likely going to be coming to Apple TV Plus since this is produced by Apple. It was a fantastic movie, man. But guys, if you've seen the film, I'd love to hear what you guys think. So sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry in the conversation after the video. Hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if not already. And before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends. Benny Share, Ryan, Karen, Yorick Roscoff, Margaret Grace, Melita, Robert Anguiano, Jeffrey Hale, Jake Entrell, Eric Official, Amy Becca, and Casey Wood. Thank you guys so much for continued support. But that's it for this video, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.